The wealthy are now dumping assets before the recession so they can buy them back at 50% later. Today we have the news of yet another hedge fund giant biting the dust. Lewis Moore Bacon is stepping away from Moore Capital Management, which will return money to investors. Bacon made his name exploiting the discrepancies between global interest rates and bond yields. But if the world's major central banks are moving in lockstep and bond yields are becalmed at low levels, there's less opportunity to make money. World's largest hedge fund manager Ray Dalio also believes the US is at risk of a recession in 2022. From his side hedge fund manager Seth Klarman, who has been called the next Warren Buffett, is warning that both the US and global economies were at risk of a recession. Klarman, who runs Bopost Group, which manages $27 billion in assets, voiced concerns about rising debt, global tensions, and the widening political divide in the US and other countries in a note to investors. Quote, it can't be business as usual amid constant protests, riots, shutdowns, and escalating social tensions, he wrote. The seeds of the next major financial crisis, or the one after that, may well be found in today's sovereign debt levels. End of quote. Hedge fund manager, founder and chief investment officer at Heyman Capital Management, Kyle Bass, from his side sees a shallow recession potentially in 2022. Also adding that he thinks US interest rates will follow the global interest rates all the way down to zero. Kyle Bass told the Financial Times that he believes that US interest rates will plummet toward zero in 2022 as the country's economy heads for recession and the Federal Reserve slashes borrowing costs dramatically more than expected. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. One of the most basic recession indicators is the stock market itself. When the stock market experiences a bear market, a decline of 20% or more, that is typically a sign that the economy is rolling over into a recession. It can unravel very quickly due to how inflated it currently is. They are going to run the system until it blows and then have a gigantic default around the globe. This will be affecting too many people. It will be very bad. People need to prepare and do not listen to mainstream media. With central banks easing again, it's no surprise that hedge funds are getting ready for a recession. With the world economy in a coordinated funk, central banks are once again easing monetary conditions. The Fed has cut borrowing costs three times this year. The ECB has driven its deposit rate even more in-depth into sub-zero territory, and has resumed bond purchases. Negative yielding debt is once again above $12 trillion, albeit down from a peak three months ago of $17 trillion. Financial repression is alive and kicking. The system is deeply rigged. $25 trillion printed since 2008 and it hasn't worked. Mere socialism for the rich. In a sane world, less than 4% unemployment would call for higher wages. It's simple supply, demand economics. The very fact that wages have not gone up and in some cases went down relative to inflation. If jobs were plenty, employers would try to attract workers with higher wages. Is that happening? No. As governments and central banks deliberately promote specific indicators to present a rosy picture of the economy, while ignoring a whole host of other fundamentals that do not fit their recovery narrative. And if their chosen indicators begin to tell a different story, they then rig the numbers in their favor. Like simply lying that the inflation is 2% when it is actually 10%. We all see where we are headed but too many just bury their head in the sand not to notice. We are going to war, we are going to zero interest rates, we are going to QE to infinity and we are going to a Zimbabwe economy. Traders see a looming recession ahead due to inverted yield curve as interest rates on short-term treasuries exceed returns on longer-term T-bonds, for first time since 2007 on eve of subprime panic. Massive flight to safety as long bond yield hits record low of 2.015%. Canada and UK bond yields inverted. German 10-year rate goes more negative. The contraction of real economy is global. After the UK, Germany posts decline in GDP. China reports worst industrial production performance in 17 years. Macy's leads new phase of retail apocalypse. Dow transportation stocks fall on dwindling freight volume. Frantic attempts to blame Fed's Powell, but gets little traction. 
Fox Business Talks Need to Fire White House Trade War Hawk Navarro, Hype's Emergency Rate Cut to Prop Up Bubble. Hysteria of Financial Analysts, This Time It's Different. The global economic slowdown is worse than the official numbers parroted by the what Gerald Salente used to call prostitutes. This recession will continue to be expanded until it explodes like Mises warned. There is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as the result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion, or later as a final and total catastrophe of the currency system involved. The hard numbers are there. From plummeting home prices in Boomtown Australia, to riots in the home of the Western Bank's Asia headquarters, Hong Kong. The economies are going down and the China vs. West money war has begun. Germany's gross domestic product went negative, fueling recession fears sweeping across Europe. The UK is teetering on recession and its pound is plunging. Rich poor, developed or underdeveloped, the global economy is melting down. Wall Street feels it, and the central banksters will do all they can to keep the money-addicted white shoe boys running. The Federal Reserve is a suicide bomber and their rates hikes have already intentionally set us on a trajectory for a market crash and the destruction of the US economy later this year, and next. Would the Fed have any reason to lower rates? They have already done their dirty work and are now spinning the narrative in order to shift the blame elsewhere. Keeping rates where they are, and continuing to remove liquidity until sometime this fall, will assure the deliberate destruction of our economy, which was their plan all along. Everyone who knows about negative bond yields, negative, zero interest rates, quantitative easing, knows the bankster bandits will invent any scheme they can dream to postpone the economic meltdown. Nothing has been addressed for quite some time now with respect to global economic conditions and causes. Instead, the global financial structure has been merely papered over with debt prolonging the inevitable. In essence, the sills of the structure are termite infested that have been in dire need of replacement, yet no one has the political will to address the matters, unfortunately. Thus, we continue to witness massive fraud, corruption, lies, cheating, stealing, and worse. And the most significant transfer of wealth in human history, globally, while those partaking in the heist keep the masses misdirected and placated. As economic pain grips more nations, oil demand keeps going down while supply has dramatically risen. Markets will crash as economic turmoil increases and as geopolitical violence escalates around the globe. We see riots, protests and unrest across the globe. Iran, Venezuela, Syria, Libya, Iraq, Algeria, Sudan, Yemen, Chile, Ecuador, Iran, Colombia, etc. The war climate is worsening and the worst is yet to come. Apparently, China is now starting to shut out US companies from bidding on projects as retaliation to the tariffs. When do you suppose Tay will admit that to the public hand how many ways will they twist that news, or better yet, which news media that reports it will be accused of fake news? How many hours do we have left before one of the multinationals goes Lehman, and starts knocking down the dominoes? Bond yields and a resilient $1,850 gold price are signaling something is very wrong somewhere. I'm panicking very quietly so as not to disturb the herd. He who panics first panics best. The deficit spending runs 1 trillion to 3 trillions a year now routinely. Treasuries are issued and the money is spent, and even though so much is wasted it enters the economy. If they say the economy is 18 or 19 trillion, then the addition of 1 trillion yearly to spending adds 4% growth right off the bat. They adjust for 2% inflation and you get 2% growth, which is a fake number. The average American is already in recession and has been for quite a while. Soft depression for 18 years. It sounds like it's time to start a war to erase the debts. The scary part is that Russia thinks we are going to start a war. So does Iran. So does China. So does North Korea. And so does Venezuela. And probably Syria. Where there is smoke, there is fire, and it looks like we are seeking to start a hot war somewhere, anywhere, that will result in the ability to erase debts. The trade war could quickly turn into a hot war. Go back to what triggered 1941 and Japan's aspirations, and how the US denied them access to natural resources. The US effectively started that war. It's been a warmongering scoundrel ever since. The US has no desire to dislodge itself from the Middle East. 
Trillions spent, and millions have died, mostly on the opposite side. But they are dead. If you are every other country, you fear the US, at least from a citizen perspective. Sadly, I would say the odds are better than 50%, that the US gets into a major hot war prior to 2025. The seeds have been planted for one. Apparently, the US government would instead let our enemies eat our lunch, dinner, and next day's breakfast, and keep losing manufacturing jobs, wages stagnate, because that keeps the international core happy as long as they can profit from it all. They can't inflate away the debts, so ultimately, there is only war that is in the minds of people who decide these things. Don't get me wrong. China has massive debts too. So the logical outcome is that China would get into a war with the US since both countries want to rid themselves of massive debts. It might start through a proxy, however, such as North Korea, or Iran, or Venezuela. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.